understanding of who's in the room. Just shout out some countries. So I know some people are from Saudi, of course. Where else? Where else do we have? Where else? More Saudis, okay, cool. Anywhere else? Planet Earth, Planet Earth I love that. Anywhere else? Lebanese, Lebanese so Lebanon, cool. Anywhere, anyone else? Cool, so mostly Saudi, cool. Um, so, well, first of all, good afternoon. I need interaction. Good afternoon. Yeah. I love that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Amazing. Um, so, today, I guess we'll be, I'll be taking you through some of my personal experiences that will hopefully empower you for your journey, um, but also speak about what I believe networking is, um, where can you actually network, and I guess the last thing is actual practical tips to support you on that journey, whether you're an introvert. How many people think they're introverted in the room? Cool. There's probably more introverts. I know this is not true. How many people think they're extroverts? How many people don't know? <laughs> cool, that's absolutely fine. So regardless of where you are on the spectrum, I hope today we can kind of be interactive. Feel free to interject at any point. Interrupt me, I don't mind. We're gonna try and make it as interactive as possible. Um, I can speak a lot about myself, but it's probably better if I just show you a brief insight into how I got here for a video. So I think the next slide has a video. So whatever screen, feel free to watch. I'm George Maffedon and I work in motorsport. I see a lot of people with broken bikes within Peckham and trying to think, what can I do to fix it? And that's what drove me to study engineering at GCSE. Now, I work with Sir Lewis Hamilton's X44 racing team as a performance engineer. Sustainability is actually at the heart of it and it's about improving that technology. Shape a better future. Choose engineering. Perfect. So does anyone know Lewis Hamilton? Yeah? Cool, perfect. So essentially, I work with his race team. So we were, I think we were in Saudi earlier this year, um, racing in Neom. Um, and I think before that, we were in Al Ula last year. Um, so I'm familiar with the environment a little bit. Um, but alongside kind of uh, that as well, um, I run a company called Motives that essentially empowers thousands of young people across the UK to access roles within STEM, so science, tech, engineering, and maths. Um, and I kind of see myself as a humanitarian engineer um, and kind of social impact leader, and I sit on a few boards as well. You may be wondering why I've put all of these companies up on the screen. Can anyone guess what brings all of these companies together? Anyone? Tech, well, yeah, some of them, some of them, some of them, that's a good one. Anyone else? Yeah, they definitely attract talent. Anyone else? I'll take two more. Networking. Networking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Human impact. So I'll give you one clue. The clue is in the room. You got it, you got it, you got it. So... I've worked at most of these companies, or the Motives team in total, so the Motives logo is there, the red one, and we've worked at almost all of them. Um, and to get most of these opportunities, applications can only take you so far. When I applied to Google, I didn't do an online application. That was a formality afterwards. So most of it has come through networking in some way to get most of these opportunities. And that's not a bad thing, it's just that people choose people they want to work with based upon who they trust, right? So it's about how many relationships of trust can you build, and then it allows you to essentially get ahead in the queue. It's always how it's going to work, right? Um, but for a lot of these opportunities, when I was doing applications to begin with, I was rejected from most of them. So I'll give you an example. Um, when I went to Rolls-Royce, the first time I applied online, I did there's uh, something called a numerical test. I'm okay at maths. Um, I did mechanical engineering and programming. I should be okay with those tests, right? And then I uh, didn't get it, so I was wondering, okay, cool, what happened? I wasn't sure. So I spoke to the recruiter who I knew of beforehand, just before I applied, that supported me a bit with my CV. And this is what a lot of people don't do. They don't ask for help. 
So when something goes wrong, they start to take it personal and think, oh, it's an issue with me. Maybe they just don't like me. But the truth is, I failed the numerical test, right? So now when she told me that, she told me it was negative marking. So what that means is that if you don't know an answer and you just put a random answer, they're going to negatively mark you if you get it wrong. Does that make sense? So next time, what did I do? Any answers I didn't know, I didn't answer, right? And then this time I got through and then I redesigned the component in the engine, improved the efficiency on it by 40% and saved them, guess how much money? In millions, in pounds. Guess how much? Ten. Not 10, a bit higher? A bit higher than 15? Who said 50? Amazing, yeah, so 50 million pounds in R&D. So therefore, it wasn't a case of whether or not I was capable of doing the role and being there. It was just part of the process. I felt that and I needed to speak with someone to understand where I fell short and improve it. And even in that process, they didn't invite me to this thing called an assessment center. Do you know what an assessment center is? Yeah? Um, so I realized I didn't get the email, but other people were getting the email. So what did I do? I just messaged her and said, I still don't have my email for the assessment center. What do I do? Next day, assessment center email. This is a big company, right? It's not like it's a small company, but still, this is how it works. It's all about people and human relationships, right? Um, even for EDF Energy, so the best way to describe it is one of the top five energy companies in the UK, much smaller than Aramco, um, but still one of the top five. And with them, I got it through volunteering within an event. And I just said, look, this is what I want. This is what I'm doing now. These are my gaps. And you know, if you have any opportunities there for one week, I would love to work with you. And often it's just a conversation. It's not this big lofty thing. It's just knowing what you want, starting with the end in mind, understanding where your gaps are. And then the last step is building the staircase to get to the rooms that you want to be in. And that's what I think all of the Motives team have done to get these kind of different opportunities. So in terms of motives, so you've got a team that, as I mentioned, there's a team of seven across the UK. Um, then we have a wider team of facilitators, people that essentially directly support the young people. Um, and we've been doing this for time, but to even build that team in and of itself. So who wants to set up a company at some point? Who's interested in setting up a company at some point? Cool. So for anyone that wants to do that, it's all going to be around relationships. It started already. Amazing. Now, to build your team, to get the next hire, the next, it's all about relationships, people that you trust yet again. All about the power of the people. Exactly. All about the power of the people. There's n most of these experiences I could never do if it wasn't for these, this whole team in the background. It's impossible. Like there's very, I only have a limited capacity. So the team I met through internships, through volunteering, through growing up in South London and Peckham. Some of them were just friends. Um, and then you kind of figure out who you can trust in this process based upon your values and how they match with the other person's values. Um, and networking is also taking, I think, me to a lot of different rooms. Um, so we all know the late majesty, the queen. Um, and through that, that was actually through a networking opportunity yet again. I knew someone that worked within, essentially advised the queen. Um, and then it was a case of telling them about motives and what we do, and then we were recognized by her kind of organization um, amongst the Commonwealth as one of the organizations that were impacting young people. Thank you. Um, and then I recently won the Young Engineer of the Year Award, and then I saw this surprise video. Um, and again, a lot of the stuff that I just mentioned beforehand has been around business or so my personal journey, but a lot of the partnerships have also come through those experiences as well. So when I've worked at a company, let's say in 2016, I worked at an investment bank. I've got no business in an investment bank as an engineer, you could say, but I knew that I need to be financially literate. These people, these people are just humans. Maybe I'm going to want to help them someday. They're going to want to help me. And it's only now, six years on, that now they're going to partner with us for three years to sponsor some of our programs at the grassroots level. That's a six-year relationship, right? So how do you build that depth is hopefully what I'm going to speak about today. But as I was kind of mentioning, in terms of the Young Engineer Award, I got this surprise video, and this was after sitting on the board of the Hamilton Commission with Lewis Hamilton. 
Hi George, congratulations on receiving the Sir George McFarlane Medal for excellence in the field of engineering. This is an incredible achievement and it's so well deserved. I've seen firsthand how passionate and talented you are and I'm grateful for all the support with the Hamilton Commission and I'm so proud to be able to call you a friend and part of the X44 team. We both know of the importance of having diverse role models within engineering and I just want to congratulate you on all the incredible work you're doing through Motives which is doing incredible things for the next generation of diverse talent. I hope that unrepresented young people will look at your journey and see how exciting a career in STEM can be. And generally, I can't wait to see what you do in your future and what you achieve. But for now, enjoy this moment and have an incredible evening. Congratulations, brother. So yeah, that was a big surprise. I was just on stage and they put up the video. I was like, what's going on? Um, but again, now, I think this story is interesting, networking all over again, because how this came, have you guys heard of One Young World? Has anyone heard of One Young World? Show of hands if you've heard of One Young World. Got two hands there, one hand there, one hand at the back. Um, so that was actually where it all began. So Mike, did we go to One Young World together the same year? Yeah, so we went to the Netherlands in 2018 um, for this One Young World Summit, similar to this, essentially um, bringing all young leaders together to essentially make an inference, well, make a difference um, in the world based upon the sustainable development goals. And after that, I built a good relationship with the organizers. It's almost like building a good relationship with the people that organize MISC, you know, for example. And there's opportunities that will directly come from this space. And when you have those relationships, when it came to, so I did that in 2018, when it came to 2020, and Lewis wanted to set up this board of the Hamilton Commission, he asked them if they could find a young person that would be best placed to essentially be on the board. And then that's how it came about. And then from there, I took my way in to other opportunities. You have to go through informal conversations, basically interviews, but they're just conversations. They're not anything more than that, right? So that's essentially how it started. But again, that's a four-year journey or a two-year journey. So these things don't happen immediately, but I think with some of the things that I'll share, hopefully you'll be able to take us there. Cool. So what is networking? Maybe we can start there. What would people define it as just before, before we go ahead? Well, does anyone want to go for it? Yeah. Creating connections, yep. Meaningful connections, yep. Yeah. Perfect. Anyone else want to go for it? Yeah. To have uh, two side communication between two different parties. Yeah. And could be a virtual or uh, physical. Yeah, it could be virtual or physical. Someone else is going to say something back there. Building trust between each other. Part. I love For that. example, as you said, if I trust you, I will follow you. Like, like word That's of it. mouth. For example, even if uh, I'm not in this industry, but I know you, through you, I can uh, reach something else. Yeah, so exactly. Building trust. Exactly, building trust. I think that's perfect. So many great answers. How some people describe it, or the dictionary version in some way, is the exchange of information and ideas among people. Now, the truth is, that means every single time you meet someone and exchange information or ideas, you're technically networking. It's just sometimes you decide to speak about football, if you like sports in that way, badminton, or Formula One, or whatever thing it is, and sometimes you you're not kind of intentional, as you said, or meaningful, and, and you might just leave it on the football and, you know, say you support Arsenal and maybe that's going to reduce the trust anyway, right? You know what I mean? So it's like, how do you find a way to be intentional and meaningful about it? But almost every single time you're having conversations, you're almost networking. So I don't see it as this transactional thing. I see it as how can I just have conversations with people, but hopefully find a way to serve them, find a way to help them. Even if it's a piece of information or whatever it is, how can I help them? And when they see you're trying to do that, they're also going to try and reciprocate. It's just very natural in that process. Go for it, yeah. What do you mean by that? Is it an integral relation between uh, different parties? So this is how the communication will happen, right? Yeah. But at the end, it should be a win-win case for both. I believe in a win-win all the time. So I guess networking, um, I would say, is you know building 
a meaningful way of building relationships, right? So networking in and of itself is like, it's just, as I said, exchanging information. Um, but yeah, eventually when you're building that relationship, yeah, it should be always win-win. I'm always aiming for a win-win. That's why I'm figuring out how to help you. Even if you don't help me, it's fine. I know down the line, you're gonna think this guy was a nice guy to work with. And if you need to recommend someone, for a particular opportunity, you're going to think of me because you know I didn't take anything from you in the first place. And I think especially when we're building certain relationships, that's even more important. And I'll speak about that as well. I guess my next question would be, where can you network? Here? Yeah, perfect. Where else? Every, any and everywhere, right? That's the truth. Maybe I should just walk out the door now. Um, so literally, I've put a lot of places here because some people forget. They think you have to be here in order to network. But the truth is that is not the case, right? So I've done it in school, sports clubs, in the street. Sometimes I've literally just been in the hotel, in the swimming pool, and I'm, or by the swimming pool in a lounge, and I'm reading a book. I think one of the best things we can do for, for networking or building relationships, finding people with similar interests, is just get a book that you actually like and just read it as normal, but buy a place like that. Nine times out of 10, someone that's also interested in that kind of book is going to come to you and going to think about, okay, cool, what is that book? How is it? You're going to give it as a recommendation. And then after all of that process, that person's probably going to want to stay in touch. It's just naturally how it goes. So it's finding ways, and I always try and carry a book for that purpose right? Because maybe it's going to catch someone's eye, right? So small things like that. You can do it in places of worship. Wherever you are, you can make that happen. So there's no space where you can't essentially intentionally build relationships, right? So that's everywhere. So what's the point? Say that again. Mutual yeah, mutual benefits, exactly. Win-win. So I would describe it in probably three different ways. I would say the first way I see it is horizontal relationships, so horizontal relationships are essentially your pairs. So the people that you're sitting next to right now, how can you essentially get to understand them more, support them with their business idea, support them with their career, help them with their CV, their applications for different things. I remember doing different tests for in uni, and then you know if I need to do a test, he's doing a test, he's helping me on my test. I'm help That's just how it goes. You know what I mean? If they're smarter than you at a particular thing, learn from them. To study every single thing in uni, I am not the smartest person. No way. I just know who the smartest person is, and I make sure I can find a win-win situation for them where they're not losing anything, right? And they're just happy. Maybe I buy them the drink that they like, whatever it is, and just ask them one question. I don't come empty-handed. I try and give something, right? And it always works. Nine times out of ten, it always works. So horizontal relationships, I think, is the first thing um, that I focus on. And if anything, this is probably the most important. Um, has, has anyone heard of an accountability group or accountability partners? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. yeah? Whom you can... Uh coordinate with and like you are exercising and you have accountability partner, he can ask you that, have you done that? So that you exactly. will make sure that the next time you are not doing the exercise, he will ask you. Exactly. You know, losing uh, weight track or like this. Exactly. So I'll give you an example. So I said to myself, I'm going to run a half marathon this year. I had an injury last year. I haven't really been doing any long runs. So I said, I want to do it by Q3 or Q4, right? And then I put a date in my calendar, because my accountability partners told me, put a date, right? Make it actionable. And then I realized it's this Saturday that I put the date for. And I can't run out of that anymore, because I'm going to look like I'm not a serious person, right? So now I had to sign up, book it, book it for another friend who's also an accountability partner, and we're going to run it on no training. But the truth is, I'm going to do it, right? And I think that's what the accountability partners are for. They help you with achieving those goals that you want to achieve that other people might not be able to essentially help you with. And that's what got me through uni and all these opportunities as I've been kind of navigating that. That's what's been helping. Um, the next one I would say is vertical relationships. So these are people that have probably more superior knowledge than you in some aspect or another. Maybe it's just one area. They're more skilled at you in, in rowing for example, and therefore when it comes to rowing, listen to them, take their advice because they've obviously been doing it for much longer than you have, right? Um, so it's, these are often your mentors, your coaches, 
sometimes your professors or lecturers, like they know more about a particular thing than you do. So it's about leaning on them for their expertise. Um, so these are key and every single application I did, for example, to begin with, or every single opportunity when I needed to make a decision, I'm always asking for help from my peers, but most importantly from the people that have been before me, so the other generations, essentially, because the truth is they might be able to accelerate that process for you and make that whole task a bit more easier to manage um, and show you things that you didn't initially consider. So I'll say that's a key one. And last but not least, probably one of the most important yet again, is sometimes you're not doing it to get anything like intentionally, you're just doing it to build friends. Literally, you have a common mindset and a community you're trying to build a community with one another. You're not trying to get anything. You don't have anything in mind. Sometimes this is the best way to do it because you're just building trust based upon the foundation of you like something, that other person likes something as well. So it's key to just do that. And one big thing I would say is sometimes I've gone to like law events. I'm not interested in law. I'm doing it because maybe that can potentially help another friend. And now I can be of value to that other person and connect them. And then at some point, maybe they might do the same for me. So sometimes you're networking, not for yourself, but for somebody else. And I think that's super important because a lot of times it's about me, 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 I, I, I. But it's really about how can the whole community win, right? So every single time, this is essentially what I'm trying to do in the process. So often you get this question every single time you're networking in some capacity, the first thing is going to be, so tell me about yourself. Go for it. How can we index our uh, communication or our uh, networking? Is there a way to index that? Is it correct to index my uh, network? Index, what do you mean by indexing? Just like storing it somewhere? Make a level, in, uh, make a level of my uh, networking. For example, Definitely. The world, as you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if I blend them all together? What does that you, mean? you can, you can, and I think those people are the people that have mastered the art. Yeah, some people have mastered the art, and then you can do it. Um, like, the truth is, it's just almost saying you should have these different people, these different levels in your life. So you should have people that are on your level, people that are above your level, is basically the thing. So horizontal relationships and vertical relationships. As because... As in this question. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, the other question I'm going to ask you. We have several platforms now. Available, yeah. Such as Teams, Skype, yeah. uh, Zoom, WebEx, yeah. etc. What is the best and the future uh, platform that you are, from your perspective, your opinion, yeah. without any offense to any of them? Yeah. Uh, which one you think is going to be similar to today? For example, the phone and like. Yeah. Because mostly it will be uh, teams going together. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, communication That's an easy one for me. I would actually say LinkedIn. Yeah. LinkedIn is like, I mean, I've made hundreds of thousands of LinkedIn. Like literally just through having the platform because people see your work and they're like, damn, I want to work with you. I want to partner with you, right? So, but it's when they've seen you've been consistent on it, it's great. And I guess all the other platforms are just for setting up the communication. Um, one thing that's been super helpful, actually, is there's a, have you heard of Calendly? Calendly before? Calendly? Is this is owned, I think, by Microsoft? No, Calendly is owned by a company in the US, actually. Um, it's a chat sales company. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they've been acquired yet. It's for business, but like uh, you can use it for anything. So I use it to schedule interviews, schedule meetings with tons of different people because essentially what it does is I can just send someone my Calendly link and they book time with me in my calendar. Initially, that can seem very like transactional. What you have to do is the way you frame the message. I just say, look, find the time that works best for you on and then I just share the calendar, right? But you pre-populate it with the times that you're available. So then what that means is that any single time you're reaching out to someone and you're in conversation and you want to set up a meeting, it avoid, avoids the back and forth that you have to do. Oh, are you available 2 p.m.? This and then you have to go back and forth until you find the time. Calendly is a nice one. So I think Calendly is a great tool for networking to speed up 
the process and avoid it. But I think LinkedIn, number one, if you ask me in terms of the algorithm as well on the platform, if you understand how it works, it's similar to TikTok in a professional like, capacity. Yeah, so you just instantly link them, link them yeah. with the output. Yeah, 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 yeah. Microsoft yeah, bought yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah, all my profiles on Outlook, and it's just the updated in, in uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. The other way reverse. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so that's how it works. So on this question, tell me about yourself. Does anyone feel confident about answering this? Want to complement your answer yeah, yeah, go for uh, it. with the question. Please. There is one tool named Crystal. If you're using a LinkedIn, most of the time people are not willing to reply. You send requests to 10 people, yeah. out of 10, one reply. If you use the Crystal tool, actually basically it's a tool for sales people, but if you put the profile of some person on the Crystal, yeah. you will uh, know the personality of this person, how he respond well, by phone call, by email, yeah. by chat, at which time he is in good mood. So at, yeah. at the end of the day, we are humans, so we reply accordingly. So if you use the crystal, it's just like uh, cost you $20 a month, and you will be able to get more responses, like 90% improvement in your response cool. on the LinkedIn. Complement it with the LinkedIn, it's good. and it will give you the best results. That's good, thank you for that. Another thing I would say on LinkedIn, as you said that, is any single time you send a connection, if you're networking, do not just send the connection and not write a message. That is a rookie mistake because the truth is no one is entitled to accept your request so now if you've not put anything on there why am I going to accept you sometimes look you've made it up to a certain level someone's going to see your name and then you're going to be like cool it makes sense right but for the most part even I try and avoid just pressing invite to connect I make sure I write a message with it and that's often through doing some research on their page, just clicking on their page, seeing what they've recently done, seeing what they do that you find an interest in, and making sure you make reference to that in your message, because that's how you be intentional, as opposed to just, uh, let me just increase my connections from 500 to 501. You know, like, there's no benefit of that, so it's sending that message, and then the truth is, sometimes they'll actually reply back to you and then it instigates a conversation. If not, you now have to try and spark a conversation again. So that will save you a bit of time as well. But does anyone feel confident with this question? Yeah, go for it. Hello, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Nelly and I love sports. Amazing. I wanted to ask you what happened with the half marathon. Did you do it? I'm doing it on Saturday. Oh, this Saturday? Yeah, yeah this Saturday, yeah. I'm not ready, but I'll, I'll be fine. I'm just, I did some exercise this morning, 2K. You I think okay. yeah, 21K is not too far from that, is it? You'll never feel ready. Just yeah, do it. Exactly. Pace yourself. Enjoy exactly. the process. Exactly. And yeah, just uh, enjoy it. I will Good do. Luck. I will do. No, thank you so much for that. Sorry? Which one? Are you a runner? Yeah. Ah, oh, love it. Yeah, give me some tips. Um, after, after the session. After the session. Uh, <laughs> but you see that? That's networking right there. You put it out into the world, what you're doing, and someone's probably going to want to help you. That's how it goes, but a lot of times we don't put things out there. You go for it. Uh, towards that, actually, sometimes like this question does. So tell me about yourself. Yeah, it can be a loaded question. Yeah, it is. You can start like if you're, t you can talk about your degrees. You can talk, you know, what you've done in uh, education, yeah. your work. Your, but I find what I found at least useful is when you kind of like blend your answer. Say a little bit about yourself, like make yourself more human. Yeah, maybe, exactly. And exactly. then give a little bit about your professional background. Probe the interest. If there is interest, you can expand on that. And, and one of the things that I found very useful is hobbies. Because like when you share a hobby or talk about a sport you enjoy, that usually sparks uh, a deeper conversation. So Agreed. I agree completely. Uh, and and, and uh, towards one of the slides you said about the vertical and horizontal connections, so the vertical one, you talked about like the uh, how you can benefit from somebody who has already been there. Yeah. But I also think it's, uh, the, the, to add to that, there is value in finding somebody who isn't where you are or who might in the future want to be in a different Agreed. place. And you network with them because, you know, in like five, ten years from now, you don't know where they're going to be. Agreed. So no, that, that is a great point. So you're, you're saying not just people at your level and above, but people... I agree, 110%. Um, and I think 
that is on them to also do it, you know, to you. But yeah, both ways, I think that's such an amazing point. And I think it probably links to this point in terms of just friends, you know what I mean? In that sometimes you're just trying to do it to be cool and learn from someone else. So yeah, I agree completely with you. Um, in terms of the, tell me about yourself. I often have these three basic things that I would put in an answer to kind of build on your point in that like it's a blend of who you are as a human, um, essentially. So I start off with who you are and what do you do, right? And then it's like, what do you really care about slash enjoy? And then what are you good at slash something relevant that you've done? If we can, if everyone has their phone and so forth, I don't want us to leave the room before everyone being able to do this. So we're gonna go through each one. Um, so if you have paper or your phone, Let's try and do each, and I'll give you around 30 seconds to do each, and then hopefully by the time you actually leave this room, you've actually left with a potential answer if you couldn't answer this before, right? And even if you can, there's probably some way of you improving it, right? So who you are and what do you do? This is an example. I'll give you it, and then you can make your own, all right? Um, but I'll give you probably like, 10 seconds, well, 30 seconds to do it, but any questions in the meantime? I'll come to you after, go for it. Uh, so I have a question, uh, my name is Tema, and uh, my question is, um, in networking, uh, how do you keep up with the continuity of this relationship? Uh, do you Great question. Is it, uh, the process, just, uh, just saying the process, because if you know a lot, a lot of people, it's hard to keep up with yeah. every single week, weekly or monthly. Yeah, great Even one. Even if it was okay yearly. Yeah, I, I agree. That's such a great question. And that I'm going to get onto that as well as one of the points. Um, what I do, that's why I love LinkedIn, for example. So what I do, as opposed to keeping in contact, because what I used to do before was every three months, every three to six months, I would uh, message, especially the vertical relationships, and give them an update on what is going on in my life at the moment, right? It's just an update. It'll be like, the subject will literally be life update. And they'll love to read it. You know, everyone likes to hear how someone, you know, that they're trying to support is doing. So it's usually okay, and I just let them know, oh, I'm in third year of uni at the moment. Two modules are pretty hard, blah, 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 blah. And then just give them any updates. I've been applying for this, I've been doing that, or I'm fundraising at the moment. And then it kind of just puts it out there. And then if they can help, they will, but you're not expecting anything in return. You're just saying it. Um, so that's one thing. But LinkedIn, I love even better because the truth is I just connect with every single person on LinkedIn that is within my network as such, and that's thousands of people. And then I just do a post every other day, every other week, and that's a broadcast now to this is what I'm doing. So I let them know, oh, I just got to the airport. I'm going to Saudi. I let them know, I've just got to Saudi. And then as soon as I get to Saudi, I get to this event, I say, I'm at MGF 22, let's go. You get what I mean? So that's how I approach it, and that's my approach every single time. So now they know I'm in Saudi, then what happens? What happens is someone will say, okay, cool, this person's also in Saudi, maybe you can meet them, and they'll at the person in the comments. So now I'm meeting with someone for dinner today, the chief strategy officer of some company in Saudi, just because of the post that I did on LinkedIn. You see what I mean? So I think the best way sometimes is using these platforms and just being public with some things that you're doing and some of your endeavors. And in that way, people find a way to essentially connect with you and reach out to you as opposed to you having to always reach out to them. But if there's a relationship that you really want to maintain, then definitely do a monthly, well, bi-monthly or uh, update every three months. I think three months is a good amount of time, every quarter essentially, to let them know what you've been on and you can send that same message to everyone that you're trying to keep in contact with vertically and for your friends, I guess, you know how to be a good friend, I hope. It's just, you know, reaching out to them, seeing how they're doing, just saying you thought of them. And then, you know, when you do ask for help or do ask for something, they're more likely to help. If it's on Instagram, or you actually react to their story. You can just swipe, 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 or you can actually react and write something. I always remember people that react and say something because there's only very few people. It's like when I go to an event like this, 
I love it because I'll tell everyone, connect with me. Everyone, please connect with me, LinkedIn, whatever. I know the truth is most, most times, nine out of 10 times, probably only 1% of the room would send me an email. So I'm fine. I'm not going to be that busy because most people will not even send the actual message. So when you actually send a message or something, it makes a big difference. Or even if it's just a reaction. So I would say to keep in contact horizontally, just try and you know, react to their things on social media and whatnot. And vertically, using platforms like LinkedIn and so forth to just let people know where you are with your update. So people like to say, if you're you know, doing a business, build in public essentially. Um, and sometimes that goes contrary to some people's views, but um, I like to do that. It works for me a lot. And a lot of my business has come from just doing it in public. Yeah. I think there was a question there as well. Yeah, for you. Yeah. Uh, so I had, so basically your entire speech was about the importance of networking. Yeah. My question is, do you have any tips for people who have social anxiety or are introverts and how can I like put myself out there and network? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say for an introvert, for example, that is not as much. So it's just the context is different. So it might not be in a big room like this. It's just finding, it's basically doing your research. So you're probably better at research than the extrovert because the extrovert will come into the room and can just speak to anyone, you know what I mean? But for you, it might be a case of seeing who's actually coming to the event and making sure you're very prescriptive with that and then essentially going to that person and letting them know like you love their work, you love what they're doing and saying it in detail so that they now want to, they're like, oh, this person's actually like amazing. You know, I, I want to get to know that person more. But it's still like a challenge. Like it can still be a challenge. To walk up to that person. 110%. And sometimes it's a case of just doing it on one of these platforms, right? Afterwards or beforehand. Um, and then when you actually see them, you're a bit more confident because you know you had a conversation beforehand. So that's why I think it's, it's researching can be a bit more impactful and focusing still on the one-to-one -one interactions and doubling down on that. Where an extrovert might do 10 people, you know, you can just focus on two yeah. and make sure those relationships are the ones that you really want to focus on. Okay. I hope that answers the yeah. question. Yeah. I think you had one here, then we'll go on to the next one. Yeah, please. Um, so I'm also an introvert, but not an extroverted. So I have to do networking. Uh, what I've been doing, especially since the COVID, is uh, communicating with people on LinkedIn and yeah, then exactly. scheduling a Zoom meeting with them. So that makes me feel that it's only like two two people in the same room. Yeah. And I think most of the time people would be interested in setting out like a 15 minutes call or something like that. 110%. And the truth is, and that's probably, that's a great point. Most people are willing to help. Most people. It's just that, you know, everyone's busy, especially if they're an executive or whatever it is. Something you just have to be more persistent. So again, on LinkedIn and all these platforms, don't think you can send one message and that is it and you, they don't reply, and you're wondering, why didn't they reply? Again, they're not entitled to reply. So sometimes it's just a little bit of persistence, and that might be a bit annoying, um, but people have done it to me, and now we speak every week. You know, it's just how it goes, right? So it's about being persistent until you get what you want. So I think there's an element of that, um, but yeah, I think using the platforms to set up Zooms and so forth is probably the perfect way, and then you don't have to meet them in person, to be fair. Yeah? Hi. Hi, here. Cool. Where's hair? That's a good one. Okay. Good. Well, thank you first for being here and for uh, sharing your knowledge with us. Um, a bit of a practical question. First, actually, two. First, uh, what kind of con what kind of the content of the message you will be sending on LinkedIn for before connecting with a person? What kind of content you will be uh, cool. writing? Yep. And the second question, like in such an event, uh, approaching any person without knowing who they are and where they're coming from and what kind of uh, background uh, or, or position they're holding. How would you introduce yourself and uh, what is your aim basically? Because we know there is different kind of uh, relationship like the vertical and the horizontal. Yeah, exactly. How do you aim for which kind of uh, relationship you want to build with that person? And even, even if like you don't know what you want from this person but you want to keep, uh, you want to create a connection and you want to know, um, there's so much uh, opportunities in here and everywhere mm. around the world. But how do you introduce yourself and how do you keep uh, this kind of connections? 
Great one. So in terms of how you introduce yourself, hopefully we're going to go for it now and you'll be able to get the answer essentially because this will be a general approach that you can use anywhere and then you'll figure out whether it's going to be horizontal. You'll see from their expertise whether they're you know, deep in this thing or not and then you'll be able to put them in, the, in a kind of rank in that sense. Um, and then in terms of how you send that initial message, it's often, hi, George, love... Um, Loved your most recent post on signing up 250 young people on the application season program. I'm also passionate about social impact and social mobility. We'd love to stay connected. Looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks. What's your name? Exactly. Done. Finished. Right? So that's what I do every single time. I just make sure. No, no, no. It's just it's focused on them. I don't want anything, really. I just focus on them to begin with. I don't ask for anything in that initial message. It's just, I appreciate them, shower them with praise. Yeah? yeah? No worries. And this will be the second one. I'll put it on there earlier so some people can do. So what do you really care about? And this is where you just say, I'm really interested in helping young people fulfill their potential and make STEM more accessible. And I want to leave everywhere that I found better than I found it, found it. And then in my spare time, I play football. I support Chelsea, by the way. I don't know if anyone. I love that. Um, and I watch Formula One, and you probably guess I support Hamilton. Then maybe this allows us to be human and connect on that level. Um, so that's that one. And then the last one, because I've only got a few minutes. What are you good at or something relevant that you've done? Um, so for me, and you can take a picture again. I'm absolutely fine with that, so you can do it yourself. Um, because of my interest, I've become really good at designing products and programs for underestimated young people, and I also currently do research on sustainable technology. So now, I've said so many things in this thing. I've put so many things. So now, you can speak to me about STEM, engineering, Chelsea, Formula One, Lewis Hamilton, young people, under the society, the environment. There's nothing you can't speak to me about. And if, if it's something outside of that, okay, maybe you're better off speaking to someone else. If, if you don't like my energy, right? And that's okay. Right? You just move on to another person. So I think that's often how I approach it. And I think this links to something that you were mentioning. What happens next? How do you keep relationships? So my last points would be the best thing. When you meet anyone here, the most important thing is to follow up within 24 hours. Because after that, I might forget your face. Very easily. You know what I mean? It's just natural. You're going to see so many people. I'm going to see people on the plane. I'm gonna the truth is, it's so easy to forget, right? Um, and then advice, really applying advice and maximizing each opportunity given. This is for the vertical relationship. So when they tell you something, you don't always have to do it. It's entirely up to you. Um, but it's most importantly taking something from that advice that they've given you and finding a way to implement it. And then going back to them and saying, I've done X, Y, Z. This was the result. What do you think? You know what I mean? Or just letting them know this is the result. And the last thing is the best relationships are reciprocal and have a cadence. So try and, after you finish your first mentoring session, ask them, when's the next session going to be? Can we set a session for December the 12th? And don't leave that meeting until you have the next date. That's how you should do every relationship, right? And try and keep it to some frequency. So the last thing that I would say, is the law of attraction is nothing without the law of action. So let's get to work. Let's build those relationships. And yeah, thank you for having me. And let's connect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, so feel free to connect with me, George and Mafford, on, on, on all platforms. And I'm going to be here as well. So yeah, thank you.